What's good, YouTube? New Never You here. Today, we got a little different setup. I told y'all I was coming with that, um, them gems, man, them gems. Uh, breakdown of why I decided to do an LLC and stop playing with conventional jobs and stop being treated like trash. So, we're going to get into it. Uh, forgive me if the background noise is crazy and this camera shakes. I still trying to get used to being a person that uses equipment so this is crazy so let's go ahead and share the screen uh, all righty we gotta figure all this stuff out we're gonna do it live we're gonna put my self right here uh you know what I don't even care about my real name being here at this point. Oh, well. So we're going to pull up a calculator. And so this is basically what we're going to do. Um, we're going to go ahead and basically detail every little bit of how much money you would make versus how much money you actually see. So let's go with a generalized margin of let's say we're all making 40,000 a year right cool so generally taxes is going to be around safe bet to say it's 30% so we're going to multiply 40,000 times 0.70 and that knocks out 30% for you so from the from the jump if you work from January 1st to December 31st uh, annually after taxes, you're looking at 28,000 bring home, but let's say you got a insurance premium and they take 160 out every month. So 80 every two weeks. So we're going to do, ignore this number. I was doing something else earlier. So we're going to do 80 plus 80 is 160. So 80 every two weeks, 80 for the other two weeks. Multiply that times 12. So you got 1920. So you'll go ahead and subtract 1920 from your bring home. So you're looking at 2608. And let's say that um, you do a 401k and you do. Let's say you do 5% of your bring home. So your, of your net. So they usually bring the 401k out from my experience before they tax it. So it'll be 40,000 times 0.95. Uh, so that's 2000 for your 401k. So we got insurance, we got 401k, we got taxes. Um, let's do rent next. Let's say your rent is a thousand a month. So we're going to do that times 12. Oh, I divided it by 12. Boy, I'm slipping, tripping. Slipping, tripping. All right, we got some random. Let's get rid of that. We don't need that. So that's 12 sticky stacks. Mm, depressing looking at it. Yeah, that's right. So right now, after insurance, 401k, taxes and rent you're already at 12,080 now let's say you have insurance on your home let's say that's a hundred bucks 100 times 12 we already know it's 1200 but just to break it down minus 1200 so that's insurance on your home 
home insurance. And these are just generalized numbers. I mean, you could be paying less for this in insurance. You'd be paying more than this in insurance. But it's just a generalized purpose on showing you why I've decided to do what I what I've done because at the end of it, you'll you know uh, I'll explain it better. Um, let's do cell phone. Let's say a general cell phone is what usually sixty a month on a good day, maybe. So seven twenty. Now we got utilities, lights and water. Let's say together they're two hundred a month. So 2,400. Now, let's say we get an oil change every, every quarter. So every four months, that's going to cost us 50 bucks and we do it four times a year. So that's another 200 smackies. Um, and let's say we have to get some tires. Let's say tires are 700. We get a deal. I ain't really, I put that one there. We get a deal, we buy three, get one for free, whatever. So 700 for tires. All right, so we got tires, utilities, oil change, um, insurance, uh, da, 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 401k and taxes. So now we're sitting at 6,860 bucks. Now let's say you're like my fiance and you can drop 120 bucks every two weeks for groceries. So let's say 240 a month times 12. 2880 um now you got to get gas for your car um and let's say it takes 25 bucks to fill up and you have to fill up every week so 25 times 4 times 12 1200 bucks just for gas Um, so that's generally the necessities of life, um, food, gas, water, utilities, insurance, and let's just go ahead and say, you don't go to the doctor often, but let's just say we take away 500 for copay, antibiotics, all that good stuff. And let's say you want to have a savings fund. So you save $1,000 a year, or you try to. So after it's all said and done, from $40,000 from what you make a year, after you pay for things that are generally important to you, this is what you're left with, this 1280, give or take. Now this is, this is if everything goes to plan. You plan everything to the T. You don't spend over, you don't spend under. Nothing goes wrong outside of what you've already planned for. Um, this, this isn't even birthday gifts, Christmas gifts, um, taking yourself out to the movies, taking your girlfriend out to the movies, boyfriend out to the movies. Um, and God forbid you have, well, not God forbid, but if you have kids, I mean, this is, some of that stuff doubles. So $40,000 a year equals this if everything lines up perfectly. So you work, I'll do it over here so we can keep that number. We work 40 hours a week, usually four weeks a month times 12. So 1920. So I work more hours than I actually have in pay if I make 40,000 a year. 
Now, if I don't choose to get insurance, this clearly goes up. And if I'm living by myself and I'm not buying food that much, this clearly goes up. If I'm a homebody and I don't really drive a lot, then this goes up because I don't have to get a lot of gas. I don't have to do a lot of oil changes. I don't have to get tires. Um, those tires, you know, it's once every four or five years, maybe even seven years. So a lot of that stuff can change, but this is going off the basis of you have to pay for those things that year. Um, so this is why a lot of people get credit cards, but credit cards, as you know, have interest rates. Usually 27, I've seen them from anywhere from 16 to 29% interest rate on credit cards and credit cards is just one of the many things that you can get attached to student loans, uh, medical bills, all these different things that um, really contribute to honestly people killing themselves, people being depressed, divorces, all these other things that really cause people to just go ballistic because really you can't really afford. I mean, let's just be honest, 40,000 and there's people living off $28,000 a year. So if I did it off of $28,000 a year, so like this would be non-existent. You were literally like on this. I don't really understand how people are doing it off of 28,000 a year. So hats off to you. If you're, if you're, if, if you're doing that now, you get your cards. Now that we, you know, I keep this one up. I, I got a third tab open. Whenever, one, yeah, there we go. Once it loads, <laughs> you get your cards, Pokemon cards. Um, I write poetry, so I sell my books for the first ones thirteen, second ones fifteen, and the last two at the moment are twenty. RVR on Amazon if you would like to purchase, or you can just come directly to me. So. 13, 15, 20, 20. Now, obviously I have to buy the books. So some of that comes off of my return, but let's say new book comes out, $20 a copy. Um, 10 people want it. Now those 10 copies realistically may cost me 15 bucks plus shipping. Mm, shipping is really like eight bucks. So 177. And this is a day. Uh minimum wage is what 725? 725 times lunch break is usually it's say eight and a half. Sixty one sixty three. So this is what somebody makes in a day, eight hours, eight and a half, nine hours, really. And this is what I would make selling 10 books after I pay um, whatever. And of course I would put taxes and fees in there. So when I have to pay the IRS at the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. So 177, it would take that person three days to get to my one day. And now, granted, let's say I'm not selling books every day. That person will obviously get ahead of me because they're going to work consistently five days a week. So 61, 63, or 62, 63, my bad. Three thirteen. If I sold 20 books that week, I've already, I've already, like, I'm, I'm still ahead. Now, it's definitely a grind with me doing that, with me trying to stay above the common person. But like I said, I also sell Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yu-Gi-Oh cards can range from anywhere from a penny to, I think right now, the most expensive card I've seen, let's just say 10 stacks, $10,000. 
let's say I have, and a lot of people won't know what these cards are. Let's say I have 20 Chaos Emperor Pendulum Dragons. Right now they are $45 a piece. So let's say I sell them all on my website, 900 bucks. So 45 copies, if most people want to play set, I got 20 copies. So play set is three. Let's go over here. We don't need this one anymore. Uh, so it's like 425 times three times six. So three is the play set. Six is how many play sets. So that'd be six play sets. So to be 18 copies plus 850, which will be the last two copies if somebody bought them separately. So 85 for shipping. Um, let's just say 15 for the bubble mailers, shipping and tracking. So a hundred bucks goes towards shipping and tracking, um, taxes at the end of the year, just off of this 560. Okay. So 560 plus my. I got to do taxes on these books too. 354. I remember that number. Um, 70. 247.80. Okay. Versus the, what was it? 62.53 times five times two plus 312.65. All right, so 807, and this is all for me in a week selling Yu-Gi-Oh cards, books, um, is after taxes. I just go ahead, you know, just to track the taxes um, 807.80 versus somebody's three weeks, 9, 937.95 at minimum wage. And this is what I made in two, three days. Now, obviously, I had to have skills at some point to learn how to do all these numbers, but me. Let me just add 5K. You know what? No. Let me add, let me add 35. It's probably less than that because the percentages are different, but no, let's just go back to 1280. Let's say I'm living off 40,000 a year. Now me as an entrepreneur, I am trying to fund my own business because unfortunately I don't apply for a PPP loan. Um, it's, from what I understand is basically a grant for businesses that they can get forgiveness on as long as they do certain things. Unfortunately, I don't meet that criteria. So I am footing the bill for this business on my own. So that resorts to me selling books, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, Pokemon cards, music, or whatever I, you know, I'm entitled at doing as far as my free time. But when I work a job like the one I currently have where, you know, I'm constantly being lied to, I'm constantly trying to be taken advantage of, I'm constantly not really paid what I'm worth. Um, and then the company, you know, I get the company has to make money. They have to see their overhead, but when, they call us foot soldiers, I guess, when we're doing the majority, the bulk of the work. And at the end of the year, after our necessities, 
this is what we're left with. Me as an entrepreneur or trying to be one, it's very difficult to flip this into, let's say this is three days. Let's just, let's just go ahead and say this is a week uh, times four times 12. So granted, as an entrepreneur, I won't have access to 401k and all that stuff at the start. Let me move this down so it doesn't vibrate and you can hear it. But that versus, the, I mean, at the supplies, would say, let's just go ahead and take away 12000 That's still light years beyond this. And all I had to do was foot 12000 bucks. I couldn't do that working a conventional job because I'm constantly trying to survive every paycheck. I don't have extra money to put, put towards cards and other things to, to really progress myself. So I've been, you know, figuring out the way to trade barter, all these other things with people so that I can get cards so that I can get to this point maybe even higher than this because 40,000, that's my cap working a job. I may get a raise, I may not get a raise, but essentially let's just call it a cap. With this entrepreneurship, I'm not locked behind a cap, but I'm not locked behind a guaranteed, I guess, low either. Like an entrepreneur, it's either all or none. If I fail, then I suffer the repercussions. If I fail at a conventional job, yes, I may not be able to do everything I would like to do, but I'll have a solidified job until things like the pandemic happen and then all the people are losing their jobs and just nothing's really safe. So I decided to try to go for this plus versus this because I want to have a body to spend with my family. I want to have money to go places with my family. And if somebody within my family gets sick or I have to take care of them, I don't have to ask permission to get off to take care of my family. Whereas here I do. And that's really the, the big difference for me is that I am the, the master of my own life. I am the master of everything that I deem important here. Now, this is not always going to be a substantial number. Sometimes it'll be very low being an entrepreneur. And I understand that. But I'd rather take the risk and potentially be here plus than to be stuck here for the rest of my life. Now, I am not a financial advisor and I do not advise that you follow my example because this is my formula and this is just something that works for me so if you try to do this and it doesn't work um that's not my fault i'm just giving you my information and do with it as you will but just letting you know i'm not responsible for anybody's decisions so you can't sue me anyway but back to the point I'd rather strive for this and beyond than to be told this is all I'm worth at the end of my year. Maybe even less than that if something terrible happens. So hopefully this video has been insightful and helps some people go for their dreams if they definitely in the means to do so. I wish everyone the best and I just want us all to, you know, reach for the stars and try to do the best that we can and not have rich people tell us that this is all we can accomplish because you can accomplish this more if you just put your, your mind to it, buckle down and figure it out. So this has been new, never you. Thank you for watching. And if you didn't knew, I mean, I guess you do now.
I guess I should go back to here so you can see me. But if you didn't know, now you do.